I'm going to be talking about something completely different, very different from the others I've chatted about, and that is how the media can play a part in your coaching career and how they can actually add value to you. So this is what we're going to touch on um, within the next half an hour or so. I, to allow you to get further on your day, I'm going to try and be a little bit quicker. First of all, we are going to talk about how a professional coach, uh, sorry, a pro pro every professional's career starts at school. So you need to position yourself as an authority. When we, when, when we all read up about an athlete, you can hear about the school, but you don't often hear about the school coach. But be the coach that makes the difference. We are always interviewing coaches at Intune. And stories uh, that we have, and what we have noticed is very often sometimes coaches, they don't even know their player's name. He'll say, for example, my left back is really good. So what's his name? Mm, not sure, or call somebody in the background, what's that guy's name? We can't report on that. We can't just report on things that we don't know about. And also, the media can help you. They can help build your profile as well as that of the school. It's up to you to make that impression on your player and to get your name out there. If you are in the news, it promotes your profile as well as that of the school and your potential star. Here's another example. We ran an international schools competition for youngsters. Once we, we identified the local team, they went and played in an international final. We would profile the coach on the radio, the television, and the print. And when the school came back, they'd always say to us, you know, registration numbers have gone up for the following year, and that's a sign of a successful school. Well, the coach has said to us, wow, I'm more sought after in my area, and I've been offered better positions. So the media actually has a value for you. And the public love a great story. We're going to go into this. We all know that South Africans love winners and they're ruthless when our national athletes don't do well. And the media is filled with things like, but there's no development. Meanwhile, there's so much development out there, but nobody knows about it. So the media is not nearly as scary as you think, but they're actually here to assist us. But I'm just going to take you back one step and say, who am I and what qualifies me to be able to talk about the media? Well, I'm the founder of Intune Communications. And as Sean said, uh, we are over 10 years old and we specialize in PR communications and digital agency. And we love doing content, our content creation. We love telling stories. We also do media training as that's very critical because everybody needs to be aligned on the messaging. You need to chat along the same lines. You know, there's rules and regulations for everything, whether you're at a school, an academy or a sporting uh, body or even as a sponsor. What are my qualifications? Well, I've got diplomas in marketing, I've done communications, um, management and industrial psychology. So getting back to Intune, we're very results driven. And what that means is our key objective is to give clients an excellent return on investment or what we call the ROI. We measure this against what they spend and PR is, is becoming more and more a critical link in the marketing mix. Me personally, 30 years experience in sport. I've personally worked at, on a multitude of sports in the inter, on the international, domestic, and school level. The reason we specialize in PR is that through all these years, I've realized it's the most underutilized element of the marketing mix. Although I've experienced a great change in this, specifically since COVID. And, you know, an event will cost a lot of money. But only those that attend it witness it. And if you're lucky have enough for it to go on TV. But much of the much is not on TV. And then it's over. What we do through PR, we take that, that story further. We take it far and wide and we let it live longer. 
sports I've been involved with? Well, look at the right hand bottom corner. Benson Hedges. Yep, I started by working with a company that had the rights. I had the company that bought the rights into, into the country. In those days, um, nobody believed in, in, in Benson Hedges cricket. The cricketers neither the cricketers nor the management. Just thought of it, coloured clothing? Well, that's just not done. Don't break the tradition of the white clothing on the field. So I became no, known as the pyjama queen. And my boss at the time was the pyjama king. We had to persuade Adidas in those days to even make the clothing for us. I just want to give a quick story. Uh, I hope we've got a little bit of time. But it was a specific year. We changed kit suppliers. It was the first game, Northern Gauteng versus Western Province at Tux in Pretoria, and it was a televised game. 15 minutes prior, prior to the start, one of the, the Northern um, Gauteng players came rushing to me saying, we've got a huge problem. Western Province refused to come onto the field. They say the kit doesn't fit. Well, I was a 20-year-old feisty lady in those days. So into the dressing room I went, shouted at them, put on your kit, go onto the field, we'll sort this out later. Well, the sport was more amateur in those days. So um, we could do that. Nowadays, that would never happen. Then Benson Hedges became Standard Bank, and now it's even evolved further to KFC T20. And guess what? We're still involved, which I'm very proud of. Now, soccer. Soccer was, it, I've been in the soccer game as long. 30 years ago, cricket was played in the summer and soccer in the winter. JPS was where it all started for me. I was a young white lady running around the stadiums in the townships and rural areas. It was absolutely amazing and of great fun to me. In those days, JPS was the best sponsor. They had piles of money to spend on activations and promotions. You know, sponsorship wasn't a big deal in those days. So we could experiment. So I've been through all the ev evolution of sports sponsorship. In the last 30 years, at least 20 of them, I've been involved in school sport in soccer. Rugby, I'm not going to talk about rugby because Sean has already alluded to that. And all I can say is Sean completed his matric in Italy. He did a scientific matric and he played rugby for Italy. So there have been plenty of exciting sports and sporting events that I've been involved with, which has included Grand Prix, SA Motor Racing, Netball. I even worked for the Hockey Association for a while. Even the, the logo that they are still using, we did many years ago. I've done road running, athletics. I even managed a skydiving team. I was on the organizing committee for the 1996 African Cup of Nations. It was great fun. And I've done sports for the physically and or intellectually disabled. I've been lucky enough to travel a bit. I attended the Mali and Tunisian AFCON. I went to the Korean France World Cups and I was lucky enough to work, well, sorry, we as Intune were lucky enough to work for FIFA in 2010 for the communications department. And then there were a couple of sponsors that we worked for, um, like Kia, Sony, Coca Cola, MTN. And then my international experience, well, we went to Jersey Islands in 2015 where we were part of the organizing committee for the Island Games. It was absolutely great. We, um, it, it's, 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 it's very, very similar to, to, a, uh, to an Olympic Games, but for islands mainly. So now that's me in a nutshell and Intune Communications. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is play a video of an interview that I want you to listen to. 
Hey, coach, is there anything you want to change? I mean, I mean, I don't know what you want me to tell that. Everybody's like, football's a team game, okay? It's not a team game, okay? I did my part, all right? I put in a great game plan. I mean, these players, they're horrible. These My players are no good. I mean, everybody's like, no excuses. No, I got, you know what? I got 22 excuses, 11 on my offense and 11 on my defense. Our offensive coordinator is terrible. He gets half of his plays off of Madden rookie mode. I mean, the guy is no good. In our offensive line, it's like Obama's immigration policy. Let everybody through. Do we have a chance next week? No, we don't. We're 0-8. We're not good at football. I got three white receivers. Our red zone defense is like Oprah. Like, you get a touchdown. You get a touchdown. You get a touchdown. Our quarterback, look at the playbook. We put in plays for Peyton Manning. He plays like Cooper Manning. I mean, the guy's just not good at football. No credit to the other team, okay? The other team is awful. We tried to recruit bigger, better players to come play for us, but they went to good schools. I put in the game plan. These kids can't execute. Third down, terrible. I know we need better players. I get it. We can't win with the product we got in the field here. Like, I'm down to Rick Patino some guys if I need to, but not at this level. I'm not going to jail for these kids. I mean, they're all talking in the locker room like, we're a team, we're in this together, no matter what happens, we're together. Like, not me, dude. I'm out of here. This team's terrible. So, that is, mm, what can I say there? That is very amusing for the journalists, but not so for the coach or the players. That is why media training is so important. In the modern game, a coach has to be involved in all aspects of the game, including uh, the media. Well, this, in my opinion, one of the coaches that I believe gives a really good interview is Jurgen Klopp from Liverpool. He's honest, he talks freely, he's ready to give an interview. More recently, I did notice that he gets irritated when asked stupid questions. And that was against the game, that, that was when they lost against Man City a couple, about a week or so ago. I saw him feeling, and, and also there's sometimes a, a, um, a language barrier. So journalists might ask a question that's slightly encrypted, so they don't quite understand what's going on there. So let's get on to the next slide, which is what school sport is up against. What happens when we call a newspaper? Well, the first thing they say is school sport doesn't sell newspapers. It is especially relevant today when there's so much competition and sales are so important for, for newspapers. Journalists must be aware of who their target market is and what they want. And here I refer to both print and electronic. If the listeners and viewers are not interested, they just switch channels. What social media has done to, for the millennials and the generation Zs, who are now those with the buying power, they have introduced a very, people have very short um, time span. So you've got to tell them quickly. You've got to, everything's got to be, quick and on the run and we have to adapt to to suit that sort of lifestyle then we also get told there's a multitude of sports if we do this for you then everybody wants to us to do it for them there are 25,000 schools in south africa of which 23,000 are public schools and they all cater for 12 million learners that actually equates to 500 learners for every school, but we know that that's not correct because there's a lot of schools out there with well over a thousand um, uh, pupils in there. Now, I googled this this morning, but I'm not quite sure if these are still the right stats, but there are 31 Olympic sports and sporting codes in South Africa. There must be between 50 and 100. So that is a lot for the media have to have to manage. Now, professional sports always gets guaranteed exposure, which means the media follow them all the time. But it's up to us PR companies, the coaches and the schools to drive school exposure, as well as exposure for what we refer to as the minor sports or the fringe sports. And we know we've got quite a few of them on the, on the webinar today. Um, you know, many of the organizations are cutting down on journalists, meaning there are fewer journalists reporting of a lot of sport, on a lot of sport, and it's physically impossible for them to do it. 
So in a nutshell, where does that place us? Unless you coach, play, or are a professional team, athlete, national team, you've probably struggled to attract consistent media attention for your school players or athletes. And yes, I think you can all relate to, to that. But I know what you're all saying. You're all saying out there, oh, but that's not my job. Really, I've got so much on my plate. I don't want to have to worry about that as well. So now we've discussed the negative news. But you know what? There's a lot of positive news out there, especially in today's age. And we are very lucky for that. So there's always, the journalists always want to follow sport development. You need to understand that there are opportunities in abundance out there, but it's up to you to go and find them. All sports journalists, no matter which organization, they keep abreast with what's going on in development um, so that they can understand what to expect in the future. So we need to keep them updated. A good media story will always get media interest. It's, in today's age, it's all about content, content, content. Everyone is looking for a great content provider which is where we at Intune have specialized. Um, this brings me to an area which I believe that community, it's, it's community media. And I believe that sport, school sport and fringe sporting associations should make a lot of you, should make a lot of use of. You must never underestimate the power of the community media. I don't know if you are aware, but there are 200 community radio licenses issued currently, four community TV licenses, and 100 print licenses. Now, I've been in the game for many years, so I know that the, this has decreased a lot over the last 10 years, but that's a lot, and that's where you can make use of things. You know, they want to know what's going on in your area. You must exploit those avenues. But what's even more exciting is the mushrooming of online and social media. I know that it can be, be, be cause almost analysis paralysis. Oh my goodness, which ones do we use? But that's where your digital agency comes on. And that's where we advise you. This is where we suggest you and you go. But this is where everything is moving. So what exactly am I trying to say here? What I'm saying is, why don't you change your mindset? You know what they say, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And we can look at simple little things in your everyday life. Life. If you introduce something and you endorse it and you start making it you, you know, you, you talk about it all the time, you, you imprint it in your brain, and it becomes natural. You know, there's a brilliant book written by John Kehoe called Mind Power. Oh, and by the way, we've put a link up at the end of the webinar for you to have a look at this. And he talks about the fact that we are all just energy. The whole universe is connected. We are all connected through energy. And what you think and what you believe, you put out there and it is attracted to you and that's what it becomes. So think positive and think differently and things will change. You know, in these COVID times, people are very anxious and there's a lot of depression. And psychologists are saying, go out there, make yourself some positive affirmations and repeat it numerous times every day. And um, it will make you feel better. So, it's all about the story out there. We have discussed changing the mindset, viewing the media differently, looking for opportunities, and now, now we come down to what it's all about, the actual interview. Every single one of you coaches out there has a unique story. You are all different. And you know what? You've got a wonderful story to tell. And the media want these stories. An, story, an interesting story 
will be interesting to the media. But you, you've got to also remember here, there's a lot of you out there, a lot of different coaches, a lot of different sports. So you, you've got to make your story. You've got to be a good storyteller as well. And the public also want to hear about your fantastic stories, the Joe blogs out there. They want to hear what you've got to say. You know, I know a lot of you out there are very good at putting your match reports out, but they want more than that. They want a good story. You know, we've got a lot of journalists on our webinar today as well. And some of them have approached us and say they also, also want to tell coaches from their perspective what they want. So that, that is something to look forward to coming up. But we know how you're all feeling at the moment. Yep. It creates anxiety and nervousness. We know, oh, people are very scared of the media. But there have been, and we know about this, we've had experience. There have been many times when we set up interviews, the coach is lined up, the radio station is ready, the print journalist is ready, the time is set up, it's confirmed, everything in writing. And guess what? The coach switches his phone off at the most critical stage. We've even had this on television. Everything is set up. We're all at the TV station, sitting there at the SABC, waiting. Um, I'll be there in five minutes, five minutes, five more minutes, five more minutes. Guess what? The interview time has come and gone, and the person's phone is off. Days later, we get it, oh, too much traffic. My phone went dead. Now, that just irritates everyone, especially the journalist. It's a great opportunity missed. We have to work so hard for our sponsors to get the media exposure for school sport at the best of times. And this ha then this happens. And it just irritates the sponsors. And it's also a strike against your name for the future. You become known as unreliable. So what we are saying is don't be afraid to tell your story. Let your personality shine through. We hear a lot of those cliche works words like fake news you know fake news is the big word at the moment um in these COVID times it's, it's it really is horrible because there's a lot of people that out there that intentionally put out bad news or fake news on corona to see it's it's like we we get to know that it's like a joke for them and they want to see how fast it can trend and the worse the news the more it trends. So that's 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 not good. Scoops, media, the it's, coaches will come to us and say, all journalists want is a scoop, and they'll do anything to say and say anything. But in school sport, that doesn't apply. Yes, they might want the story first, but they don't go and make up stories on school sport. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah, we've heard these stories, incorrect facts. A coach might come and say, yeah, we did the interview, but guess what? The facts didn't come out correctly. But you can ensure that this doesn't, ha that this doesn't happen by recapping important facts at the end of an interview. Um, journalists do not like to be asked to share their story before publication. So we have been asked that as well. Don't do that. They, it just irritates them. You can always ask for another interview where you can give the correct fa facts and even elaborate a little bit more. And there we are. You're getting two stories and that's extra exposure. Then let's look at a little bit of controversy. We've also had coaches coming to say the interview didn't go that well. The journalist wasn't asking the right questions. They wanted to to know more about what was happening off the field than on the field. This happens when there's a little bit of something in the media, like a little bit age cheating or something like that. What are your feelings? And they don't really, or it doesn't even apply to them. So, but we can counteract that as well with careful rephrasing. That is where media training comes in as well. Learn to steer the conversation to a more comfortable one. Coaches can also create their own controversy, which we've just heard about. 
and they go on about the school and how awful they are and the parents and the nailing of the, of the players, always on the moan, complaining about everything. I have to be honest, very often coaches are, in when the media talk amongst themselves, they say, oh, you know, the coaches always complain, they're always moaning, nothing's ever good enough. And they get to know which coaches they like to interview and which coaches they don't. So be a positive coach out there. Bringing the school or the club into disrepute, you know, this doesn't happen often, but we have come across it, and that's more related to incorrect facts and controversy. So this is something that we can, can handle. And the answer, you know, you can be collaborative. Share with the reporter. Ask, the sh ask to share with the reporter to get to know him a little bit more and say, this is what I'd like you to ask. You can do that. You know, it's school sport. Hey, journalists don't mind. And always remember this. A good interview will give you the edge and more interviews will follow. Also, elaborate. Elaborate. We want to tell a story. It's the age of telling stories. Want to tell us more. So a yes, no answer won't cut it. Now I'm about to show you an interview of that. Uh, you can also go to your players and speak to your players and say, okay, fine, tell me more. Do a little bit of research on them. What is your life about? Where do you come from? What story would you like me to tell the media? Speak to your other coaches. They might give you ideas before an interview. Yes, talk about this. Uh, bring in a bit of humor, you know. You're dealing with youngsters. There must have been plenty of amusing things that have happened all the time involving youngsters. Now, with our tournaments, especially the ones where we got to know the kids so well and we took them overseas, there was always, always the comedian and the team that added humor to everything. So stories, that is what it's all about. Now, this brings me on to my next example. I want you all to have a listen to this. How's that NFL football feel? <laughs> I, I'm not trying to bait you to make a decision. I just want to know how that felt. It's, a, it's it, different it, than a college it football. It needs to be broken a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. All right. A lot more. Well, you can do that your rookie year. <laughs> Wait, are we not going to get along here if I do this? I, I, I want to make sure. No, we can do this. Okay. All right. We can do it. You don't have to make a decision. Are you having fun with this I'm at all? I'm having a lot of fun. You yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. I couldn't tell. Oh, no, don't, don't worry. I'm having a lot of fun. Okay, well, let me try this again. Hey, what did you think of that NFL football? <laughs> <laughs> Oakland Raiders draft you, let's say. Just hypothetical. Well, I heard what Russ said uh, over the phone, you know, yeah. saying that he would, you know, he's with the Yankees, so he'd have to play for, like, the Giants or the yes. Jets to be able to do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, if the Raiders drafted you, yes, would that change anything about trying to play both? In my head, I, I would love, like I already said, I would love to play both. I think, you know, that's just up to, uh, that'd be up to, you know, the Raiders and the A's. Do you, well, who do you think would have a bigger problem? Uh, the Raiders, probably. Really? Yeah, I think. John Gruden likes you, by the way. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Have you, talked, <laughs> have, you, have you talked to John Gruden? I have not talked to John Gruden. Okay. I've, I've never met him, actually. Paul, bring out John Gruden here. Yeah, they say hello to John Gruden. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if he came out? Probably dab him up, give him a hug. That's it? Know, That's it? Keep it cordial. <laughs> uh, are you going to the combine? I don't know. Well, wait, wait, Dad, is he going to the combine? No comment. Dad had no comment there. Yeah. Pro day? I mean, that's after the combine. Yeah, are you going to do a pro day? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. I guess. If you want to say yeah, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. It's, it's okay. You can have a pro day. 
But I instead that of would imply that I was going to play football. Uh, okay. So you're going to have a pro day? <laughs> <laughs> When's minor? When do you report for the Oakland A's? February 15th. Oh, you knew that. Okay. So you're you're ready to go to do that. <laughs> Wait, are you going to spring training? I don't know. Wait, you don't know? <laughs> Dad, is he going to spring training? <laughs> Another no comment here. You know these microphones are on right now. Like we're, yeah, I know, okay. I know, I know. <laughs> I just, I just said. All right. How tough is it that you're doing this with Gatorade, but you know every place you go is going to ask you the same questions? I'm getting pretty good at answering, you know, these questions. No, so. you're not answering them. Well, it's, you're, exactly. You're, you're yeah, shaking yeah. me off here. Yeah, no. you know, I feel like I'm trying to tackle you. <laughs> no, yeah, everybody keeps asking the same questions. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, they'll, they'll soon be answered. So. And you know what? How long was it before I, I brought up the following? I didn't ask about his height. 11 minutes in, you didn't bring it up. So that's got to be a record, right? I was told you were going to be uh, pretty harsh, so... Harsh? Yes. Yeah, so. No, I'm just straight. I'm just honest. I like that. Well, I, I'm I like coming that. right at you. I like that. Yeah, that's it. No doubt. Uh, so your official height and weight? I don't know the official. I mean, I don't wake up and just put it, <laughs> like, measure myself. Wait. <laughs> Have you been measured before? The last I recall was my freshman year at A&M. Okay. Five Have you grown since then? Low key, I think so. A little, a little bit. Yeah. All right. So you're you're under six feet. For sure. You look about the size, you know, Russell Wilson was in here. And, I mean, you know, I, and I'm in your corner. Like, when I hear these scouts say, well, you got to be a certain height and all that stuff, I just want to know if you know football, love football. So I didn't, I mean, Oklahoma's linemen are as big as the NFL linemen. Yeah, yeah it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. I don't get the whole, nobody can see over offensive line. So Yeah, you seem to do okay. Yeah. Breeze did okay. Yeah, he did. Baker he's, Mayfield. He's still doing okay. Yeah, he's still doing okay. Yeah. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. So, there you have it. That is a good example of a yes-no interview. And that is where media training prior to any form of interview is a really good idea. So we thought we'd add a little bit of fun there. Or download the Dan Patrick Show app. So now let's get on to questions. Now, when you're first interviewed in the media, it's always the same questions that you will be asked as you get more media savvy. So the topics will change and the questions will change. But by then you got a lot more confidence in that. So always when we always set up a first interview, it's always where did it begin your qualifications, talking a bit more about your team, the sport and your life, your goals, your mentor, your training, your balance. And what's happening a lot in this country is where are the challenges? We've got a lot of poverty in the country and teams are made up with people, with, with kids that come from a, a, a more affluent background to a very poor background. And we know that you, you coaches deal with a lot of different uh, 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 challenges out there. So the media always ask about the challenges that you have to, that you're actually um, confronted with. So now we've looked at all of that. How do you, as a coach, get started? Now you've listened to me. And you might be saying, okay, fine, I want to change my mindset. Okay, yes, I agree, the media is right. But now where do I go? How do I start? Well, in this world, in the world now, we are all very, very lucky because we've got huge um, a number of outlets and we can experiment. So it starts with social media. We've got all sorts of platforms, the Facebook, YouTubes, TikToks, that's just even a couple of them. It starts a lot. So you'll sit there, 
they are all you put your story on this on the platform choose your platform and start to tell your story now here at intune that's what we do we put all these social strategies together and we we help you select which one is more relevant to you what's so nice about it is you are in control you can tell your story as you want to want it to be told you can start creating awareness for yourself promoting yourself and when you start you know you've got to start from somewhere so it's pretty so you start from small and you build up and eventually you get a name for yourself and even the media sometimes might actually look for you so and then there's videos how about making videos you're all in sport which is visual so you are so lucky um <clears throat> we also put these together and what is so nice is in social media nothing has to be perfect you don't have to have a perfect video you can take the video yourself you don't have to bring in a whole production company and do it you can do it yourself and guess what you can put it up say mm, it's not really relevant and guess what you can take it down again and you can experiment and you can practice but you can't actually do this with the mainstream. And you know what else is so, such fun? You can get your players to start getting into this interviewing as well. Start them young. They're a lot freer in talking to you than they are to a stranger. You know, I spoke just now about, uh, they, they don't have to be long, the short attention span, a one minute interview with a player or a one minute interview of, or a one minute, something that a player has said that you find amusing that you can put up. So start doing this all yourselves. But the important thing is just be out there. And that's where it all starts. Now let's get local. Now we've seen two interviews and this is the last interview, interview that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share something that we did and it's a year old. It's from last year. It involves Itumilin Kune, who is a current player, and Amanda Lamini, who is a past player. Now, there's a reason I'm going to be showing this to you, and that is because when you listen to it, you'll say, oh, but that's negative. It's talking negative about female sport, but it's talking about the message. It's the sponsor's message. The sponsor's getting into to, to women's sport, and they want people to know it. So this is, and here I'm talking about when you are interviewed, you must make sure that the messaging is correct. So let's just have a listen to this. Meanwhile, the Donon Nations Cup campaign selected young footballers to compete in the Donon Nations Cup Soccer World Finals. The tournament keeps on playing the major role in the development of amateur players. We introduced a girls tournament, which is something that is needed because Banyana Banyana is making the country proud in the World Cup and we need more of the players that will play in the next generation. Former Banyana Banyana player Amanda Lamini says the young players need to learn from their own female footballers. I had an opportunity to introduce myself to some of the girls and they were like, oh no, but we don't know who you are. And for me, it's an issue because we need to start showing them that there are role models out there that play the sports that just look like them because if you ask some of the girls they say Cristiano Ronaldo is their role model, Messi is their role model but we have Janine von Weg, we have Temi Katlani at the World Cup currently who I think we should remind them that there are girls that actually play football. This campaign draws huge crowds every year. The players will leave on the 10th September until the 12th October 2019. Prudence Makubalo, SABC News, Johannesburg. Meanwhile, the Donon Nations Cup. So, there you have it. Um, sorry about that. Little glitches, as this is our first webinar. We'll get more into it when we get more, more in out there. But if you, there's something that I want to mention about Amanda Lamini. That was an excellent interview by her specifically now the more you can be interviewed the more successful you are at that the more you can 
talk fluently and um, get yourself out there, the more money you can make as well. She makes a fortune on endorsements. She's given up the sport. She's now on super sport. She, um, and she has lots of endorsements out there. So you can make a lot of money by getting into the media and putting yourself out there. So the time is running out now and we are running half an hour late for which we apologize and we want you to get on with your Saturday's program. So I here have just touched the surface on the topic of media exposure, just the surface. There's many facets to profiling and, and promoting media exposure. Something that doesn't come naturally to, to coaches. You know, they sit there and they say, my job is on the field. Especially school coaches, because you're looking after the under nines, the under tens, the under twelves, under fifteens, and every age group you teach in a different way. So I know that your time is made up with that. So let's get on to the last slide. How can we as Intune help you? Well, we're suggesting to everybody get yourself, and it doesn't have to be a big budget, a small budget. Media training, number one, promote your sport at the school, through social media, compiling videos, and writing press release. We can write the press release, send them out. We've got extensive media lists. We've got great relationships with all the media. So I would like to now switch on my video start video I hope you can all see me right so that brings an end to me now what I want to say to all of you that are watching here what have you done in this time of corona to keep your players motivated what have you done to keep yourself occupied? What have you done? What experiences have you had during this lockdown? Why don't you share it to us in the chat box and let us know and perhaps we can chat to it a little bit further on. So that's it from me. And I'm going to hand you back to Sean to finish off this webinar. We are hosting another, another webinar in um, two weeks time. Um, We'll have as speakers, we're going to have Muhammad Manib Ali. He's a guest speaker from Pakistan. He's a sports scientist. Now, the reason why we asked you, one of the reasons why we asked you the question up front as to what sports you guys coach or what sports you're involved in, he will talk across all platforms. So he actually wants to know from us, where do all the coaches come from and what sports, what sports they do they take part in? So, we've, for example, we've got gymnastics, we've got baseball, we've got a whole lot of different sports that he can actually talk about. So he will make his, his presentation very generic and then give examples of each kind of sport we, that we, uh, we've approached. Uh, the next speaker will be Claire Tablanche. She's the Western Province Women's um, and Girls Pipeline Framework Coach. She, she coaches from, she's in charge of everything Western Province Cricket from six-year-old all the way up to the actual women's side. She's the, actual, the, the women's uh, coach itself. Um, she will be talking about women's uh, cricket, but she'll be talking about women's sport in general. And then the final one will be Hannes and you know, a lot of you guys know Hannes uh, for his, his School of Rugby and School of Cricket websites, but he'll be talking more about his DigiTV channel, uh, um, channel because people think that it's just that people just want to stream live rugby and live uh, cricket, but he'll be talking about his, pla his pla uh, platform that can stream other sports too, but more importantly than that, it can be used as a sales um, uh, uh, or a marketing uh, system for uh, school plays, for um, the educational side of it, for a lot of other things. So it's not all about the sport that DigiCampus is out there for. It's about every single kind of, um, everything that the school can actually offer. Um, just to re through, we, you'll find us on Twitter, Cass and I individually on Twitter. You'll find Cassie, Greg and I uh, on YouTube. Well, the YouTube channel will be the Intune YouTube channel. Facebook, you'll find the, the Intune Facebook channel. I've already shared this link below with uh, where to get through to the services and to um, be able to contact us afterwards. That link has been sent to you, but it'll also be emailed to you. And then just um, go through a couple of the books that have been mentioned. Again, that's uh, Legacy by James Kerr, 
Mindset by Carol, uh, Winning with Relationships by Justin Cohen. And then Cassie just mentioned, uh, she wanted to mention two books that she finds very interesting. One is the Media Training Bible, which helps you with interviews and what to do when you approach an interview and how to deal with the interview and different, different ideas around media. And the last one is the Mind Power that Cassie mentioned. 